Hello, Tex Andrews with the Light Zone Project, and this is part two in the series of videos about the Zone Mapper and Zone Finder. This starts our discussion about practical uses of the Zone Mapper tool. Um, in the last one, I show you the basic mechanics of it, and also please remember to watch the Tool Anatomy series of videos. There's a lot of important information in those. So we have a raw image here. It could be a JPEG or a TIFF. It is, in fact, a raw image. And I can take a look at a couple things here. I'm going to flip over to histogram mode. You'll note that I could probably move this over, and I could use my exposure control just to get it all the way over. It blows it right out. Or I can just move this so that we're halfway into the topmost spot. But I think you'll see why it may be better that you use this very judiciously, and I'm going to be very conservative here and keep my topmost zone here in the second part of this zone scale here and go no further. I am going to push my uh, color noise slider all the way over. I always do that. There's no harm in doing that. The next thing I'm going to do is resize my areas here so that when I bring up my zone finder, I've got a big area to look at. And now I'll deploy a zone mapper tool. So as you know, we can find the lightest areas. I can grab, I can push that up. A double check with the sampler tool shows me that this light area now is just cresting the 200 mark in my red channel and green channel. Um, still got some room there, but I don't want to push it up any further. Go back to the zones pane. I can look at the lower part of the image once again. This little black thing down in the corner, which as I said before, I might even crop out. Um, but that's our darkest point. I can go to the zone immediately below that, click place a zone lock, and drag this down. And that kind of sets our black point and to some extent sets a white point up here. So now we have this entire area of the zone mapper to start playing around with the contrast. And I'm just going to do that very quickly and show you how I can take a very bland image. And I know it's bland. And let me just stay right here. This is why when I do these demos and I'm in the browser mode, you'll never see my images start, um, particularly my landscape and fine art stuff. I never start because actually Light Zone is so powerful. I don't, I don't know whether a, a seemingly awful looking image might have a great deal of potential for uh, editing promise in Light Zone. That's how powerful the program is. So. I typically reserve judgment until I get a little further into the editing process. So I can grab this um, zone lock and I can drag this down and I can grab another one and I can drag it down and let me just grab one more and I can drag it down. Let me push this one down a little further, push this one down a little further. And if I want I can adjust that just a little bit like that. Now take a look at this sky. The landscape down here, we'll talk about in a few minutes uh, or in a subsequent video, but just look at the sky here. Let me click on the original button. There it is, originally shot, and it's sort of eh, not so great, kind of bland. But now with the Zone Mapper tool set up like this, look at how much more definition there is in this sky. This whole edge is much more clearly defined. Look at all the definition that's coming out in the clouds here. Look at the separation between the lighter colors or the lighter values and the darks. Once again I'll click original and the darker colors. You're also starting to see some punch up down here. The zone mapper tool as you can see has a great deal of power to change the contrast characteristics of your image with just a few simple clicks. Now one thing I want to say, you'll note that I've 
selected basically two zones, two zones, two zones, and drag them that way. I think best practice is not to grab too many zones at one time. You can do it, and sometimes it's a good idea, but if you're going to make finer contrast adjustments like this, you're basically grabbing one stop because remember that each of these grayscale bars is a half a stop. So if you grab two, then that's a stop that you're making a difference. And look at the changes that I've made against the um, reference bar here. Note that this one goes up, this one goes down. I've increased contrast in this area. And then I've dragged this down, increased contrast in this area, dragged this down, increased contrast in this area, etc. And you can see how these correspond to the reference bar over here. I think it is wise not to go crazy with the zone mapper tool. You can start getting strange effects. And it's better to do what I'm going to show you in a subsequent video, and that is use multiple zone mapper tools over and over again. You can do that in Light Zone, and we'll see how that's done in the next video. But I'll leave you with this. Be careful how many zones you grab, and be careful how far you move them. You don't have to do everything in one zone mapper tool. So let's go on to the next video and see what we can do with